students welcome to my channel uh, today I'm going to start another uh, history chapter chapter 3 and uh, this chapter is all about the, the sultans of uh, Delhi and uh, we have already talked about the medieval age about the kings and uh, uh, different kingdoms and uh, you have perhaps uh, become the familiar that how this uh, sultan period actually started especially with the arrival of the Turkish uh, invasion in India you will be hearing about the how this uh, sultan period actually began and here uh, we have uh, learned about the how this uh, sultan in fact had the battle against uh, Prithivira Chauhan's uh, military and then uh, uh, here uh, Muhammad Ghori in fact he fought uh, two times uh, the two battles in fact he fought and then uh, uh, the first battle uh, he fought in a uh, uh, Tarain and uh, there he was uh, couldn't succeed but then uh, in the second battle of this uh, uh, Tarain in fact he won the battle and then uh, he managed to kill uh, Prithipra Chohan in this battle and then he started uh, establishing the uh, Sultan, uh, Sultan Empire in India and so here uh, Muhammad Ghori in fact he couldn't uh, rule longer in India uh, but he uh, had handed over the most of the responsibility and territories to his uh, slaves uh, because uh, when he came to India he brought along with him many slaves in fact those slaves were actually his uh, uh, commander-in-chief and also uh, uh, different like uh, uh, responsibility uh, were taken so this is uh, how this uh, Muhammad Ghori in fact actually brought the slaves so that's why we will be talking about here uh, about the sources of Delhi Sultanate and uh, followed by slave dynasty then uh, Khilji dynasty, Tughlaq dynasty administration in the Sultanate and uh, society and economy and then last one is a decline of the Sultanate you know every uh, power is actually declining some way or the other uh, not too shortly but then a uh, little lately but uh, that is the thing actually uh, is happening in every time so here uh, we will be talking about the uh, especially the sources of the Delhi Sultanate. Now, how do we come to know about the uh, sources that is actually uh, mentioned? So here, uh, you know, ins uh, inscriptions are found, then uh, coins were found, and uh, uh, numerous actually you can uh, documentations also written on that. And uh, when we uh, try to uh, trying to learn about the history about the sultans. Then uh, we come to know about the uh, different uh, rulers and their administration uh, through the coins and uh, through the documents and uh, through the uh, inscriptions. So uh, here also we can uh, understand. So the record which uh, what was actually kept for the uh, Sultan period to know it is known as the uh, like uh, Tuarika, Tuarika, uh, which uh, Tuarik we can call it. Uh, in plural until it is known as the Tariq. So uh, and uh, were written in a Persian, in fact, a Persian language. Uh, the official language in Delhi Sultanate. So Persian was the their official language. So that is we have seen. And uh, Tuarik were actually written by learned men. You know, uh, they are sufficiently actually knowledgeable, and uh, they have written about it very clearly. So after that, we will have uh, we will be having the people of that uh, court. In fact, uh, we find the poets. Then uh, we find the courtiers, then the secretaries and administrators. So these are the people are also actually keeping the record uh, and witnessing about the sultans. So let us know about the accounts of foreign travelers. Here we have got one name called uh, Ivan Batuta or Ivan Batuta. He also has the important sources, uh, source uh, from him also we are able to uh, knowing, able to know about his uh, uh, how this uh, uh, period in fact actually has uh, prevailed so today for example to know the history better uh, we need to also uh, refer the foreign accounts because these people are actually uh, witnessing uh, by their uh, presence in the court so here uh, yeah, his work mentions Mah uh, Muhammad bin Tughlaq's decision to ship the capital from Delhi to Dawlatabad and elaborate the preparations made for the shifting so these are all actually uh, details in fact uh, they used to write and then I uh, keep it uh, in, the, in the library so let us know about the slave dynasty now who, who was actually the main leader or the uh, chief commander in this uh, dynasty so here Muhammad Ghori uh, in fact you know passed away in 206 CE and uh, uh, since Muhammad Ghori had no legal heirs his territories were actually divided among his uh, Turkish slaves. Now we have to understand that uh, Muhammad Ghori didn't have their uh, didn't uh, 
have his uh, uh, what call his uh, own uh, son and daughter in spite of that uh, he actually adopted or he uh, kept the slaves who actually became his uh, uh, son and daughters in fact and uh, uh, they were taking care of him perhaps he had he didn't have the belief on his uh, own son and daughter uh, because you know most of the dynasty we have seen that uh, their son and daughters are only taking the advantage and uh, uh, capturing and uh, conspiring and then killing so this thing happened in uh, many of the uh, dynasties so here Muhammad Ghori in fact he didn't have their uh, his uh, son and daughter uh, in the place of the son and daughter in fact he kept the slaves who were very much faithful to him uh, and he was also taking care of them uh, in, uh, in their uh, needs so here, the first uh, uh, slave dynasty that was actually began by Kutubuddin Aibak. So he was the first one to uh, become the uh, empire, uh, emperor in India uh, and uh, uh, he established his uh, uh, dynasty. So his, um, he founded the Mamluk dynasty. So it is known as the Mamluk dynasty, which was also known as the slave dynasty. And Mamluks was an Arabic term used for slaves. Okay, So Mamluk is an Arabic term, so you have to understand. So next we have got uh, another person called Kutubuddin Aibak. Okay, so uh, I mean the first one is a Kutubuddin Aibak, and uh, here the uh, the first dynasty, that the Slave dynasty actually began to rule in India, and uh, here the first uh, empire uh, emperor was actually uh, Kutubuddin Aibak. So Mamluk dynasty is the name of the dynasty, in fact, and uh, which is known as the Slave dynasty. But here the first uh, ruler uh, Kutubuddin Aibak. Uh, whose rule was actually 1206 uh, uh, to 1210 uh, CE. It may say four years uh, he has been uh, successfully uh, ruled. And uh, during his rule, you can see that uh, he placed Delhi and uh, his uh, adjacent territories in the hands of the Kutubuddin Aibak. And he had captured many Rajput uh, kingdoms and extended the Turkish rule to the Dob region. But uh, before, the, uh, before he could uh, consolidate his empire, Kutubuddin Aibak died in an accident. And uh, Kutubuddin Aibak has been described uh, as an uh, able and a generous ruler. Okay? Generous, uh, he is uh, known as the generous Mise. He was uh, giving the arms to the poor people and uh, understanding the different people uh, according to his uh, capacity. So uh, it means uh, uh, being a slave, he had uh, a great, uh, uh, like a, uh, what call? Uh, great heart and then uh, he was uh, uh, that we actually uh, discipline himself so uh, that's why uh, within the short period of time even though he ruled but his rule was actually well defined administration uh, structure also actually placed before uh, very nicely in this time so he thought of the uh, welfare of his uh, subjects and uh, for his uh, generosity uh, uh, and uh, benevolence Aibak was actually, Kutubuddin Aibak was actually uh, known as the Lak Baksha. Lak Baksh, it means the giver of lakhs. It means he is able to give the uh, openly to anyone else. Okay. Next we have got Iltatmesh. Now, Iltatmesh rule was in fact uh, started from 1210 to uh, 1236. So it means a quite long period of time. So now you can understand that. Uh, uh, after the sudden death of this uh, Kutubuddin Aibak, in fact, uh, Iltatmish actually became the uh, the ruler. And uh, you know, uh, when he became the ruler, uh, he was actually uh, very much like uh, able and efficient, in fact. And uh, you can see also that he was uh, very much uh, uh, aggressive in uh, conquering the many uh, territories. So therefore, during his reign, you know, the power of the Delhi Sultanate began to be consolidated. And uh, in fact, many historians regard uh, Iltatmish uh, to be the first real ruler of the Delhi Sultanate. So, and here what we have, uh, what we have, uh, what we can see here is uh, soon after his uh, uh, ascent to the throne, you know, Iltatmish was actually faced um, uh, with uh, several challenges. It means you have to understand that uh, when the uh, Delhi Sultanate uh, establish it means uh, uh, other our Indian uh, Rajputs and uh, other dynasties were always there to uh, to uh, what call to put the spark and then uh, uh, every now and then you know uh, Altar Mission uh, had to uh, fight and then I uh, had to won, uh, win the battle so you can understand here that uh, uh, he used to always handle such kind of uh, problem with a uh, prudence and uh, his uh, uh, stabilized uh, empire so, uh, 
Okay. Now, uh, like uh, uh, Iberg, actually Iltutmish was also a slave in his early life, and he belonged to the uh, uh, Ilbari tribe. In fact, uh, Iltutmish is a Ilbari tribe, and the Amirs, uh, the Turkish nobles of Delhi, subjected to his uh, ascent to the throne. And uh, Iltutmish crushed their revolt successfully. Okay, so that is the thing actually we can find. So after succeeding against uh, his uh, enemies, Iltutmish engaged uh, himself in a series of uh, conquests and he defeated the rulers of uh, uh, Ranthambor, then uh, Jalor, then uh, Azmer, Sambhar, Gwalior, Malwa, Ujjain, Kanoz, and uh, Baranasi and annexed uh, their kingdoms. As a result, most of the northern India came under his control and then uh, uh, his territory of the Delhi Sultanate was actually extended up to the Narmada river. So there is a thing actually he did. So Iltutmish saved India from a possible Mongol attack. Now uh, Iltutmish how he, he could uh, uh, protect it. Uh, you have to understand that when Genghis Khan attacked Persia, uh, present day Iran. So here what happened? The Shah of Persia actually fled his kingdom and uh, appealed to Iltutmish for shelter. Now here uh, Genghis Khan is one of the uh, Mongol ruler, in fact a very cruel ruler. And he used to kill the almost uh, all, always whenever he is uh, uh, marching towards uh, any of the country. Then he is killing the male. Male, it means men are always killed and slaughtered. But uh, he is uh, sparing the women. Uh, and then uh, uh, here, what happened? This uh, uh, Shah, okay, Shah of Persia. In fact, when he was uh, uh, attacked by a Mongol ruler, especially Genghis Khan. Then uh, he ran away and he asked the shelter to uh, El Tatmish. But then El Tatmish, he didn't allow this person to enter into it. Uh, as a result of that, you can see that uh, most of the this uh, big uh, attack, in fact, uh, was prevented. Otherwise, uh, if he could have uh, given the shelter to this person to India, then it's perhaps uh, Genghis Khan could have entered to India and then uh, uh, he could have uh, slaughtered every man and then. Uh, destroyed because uh, his troop is a uh, very very large very very huge okay so there is uh, we have uh, seen in the uh, some video and all then uh, the army of Genghis Khan came up to the northwestern border of the India in pursuit of the Shah of Persia but uh, left without uh, launching an attack on India so that is actually happened so they uh, left they didn't uh, attack so next we have got Rajya Sultan now another uh, the lady uh, lady uh, ruler in fact actually ruled in India uh, being a lady in fact in the uh, Muslim uh, dynasty in fact it's not possible and uh, when she became uh, the ruler in fact most of the nobles in fact became very very jealous and very very angry and they were plotting uh, when they could uh, get the chance to uh, kill her and uh, to remove her from the throne so many at times actually they uh, tried. But uh, Rajya, with a uh, prudence, with a uh, uh, like a uh, skillful, uh, she uh, utilized her uh, brain, and then uh, she started actually uh, uh, living in the uh, palace. And so, uh, Iltutmish actually nominated Rajya Sultan because Rajya Sultan was uh, quite uh, able, and uh, she was quite uh, uh, sensitive about the kingdoms. So here, Rajya's rule was actually short and uh, fraught with uh, challenges. Uh, then. Uh, Neither the nobles in the court nor the provincial governors were actually ready to take uh, orders from a woman because uh, in uh, Islam uh, it is uh, uh, mentioned that a uh, woman cannot be dominated, the man should be dominated and that is the uh, what uh, you can see the there is an inequality. It means uh, in this uh, religion the girl is uh, not given the equality and a uh, girl is always kept uh, uh, under the feet but being uh, emperors uh, like a daughter so she was a uh, some extent was given the respect and when she became the ruler you know most of the uh, this uh, uh, nobles in fact had the plan when uh, they could get a chance and then can uh, attack her so that is the they were looking for so very often you know Rajya was actually at a uh, problem always and then they often conspired against Rajya uh, or revolted so although Raja was actually successful to a uh, certain extent in uh, suppressing the revolts uh, of the provincial governors, but uh, she failed to manage the situation and then uh, was actually finally Im uh, imprisoned. Okay, imprisoned, she was put in the jail. 
then she uh, took a bold step to win over the rebels uh, she married their leader uh, altunia now this man was actually the uh, leader of the jail in fact there he was the main leader and so uh, in order to achieve the goal uh, raja in fact thought that uh, better to uh, marry a person who could uh, uh, protect me and also he can protect uh, uh, her kingdom so that's why raja uh, got married to this uh, altunia and then uh, uh, both of them they actually uh, uh, combined and then they started uh, fighting against this nobles and uh, uh try to take the but uh, uh, you know nobles were so powerful nobles were quite big number governors were quite big number they in fact uh, kill both the husband and wife uh, uh, and then uh, uh, they were actually uh, say, shattered from their uh, kingdoms so therefore altunia were actually captured by the rebels and then uh, killed in a 1240 c it means 1240 c raja as well as uh, altunia was actually killed and uh, that is the end of the this uh, uh, raja sultan's uh, uh, reign next we have got nasiruddin mahmud now you have to understand nasiruddin mahmud uh, raja's death occurred and then uh, nasiruddin mahmud actually the youngest son of iltutmish was made the sultan in 1246 ce by the nobles but nasiruddin was a very weak ruler he didn't have the any idea how to uh, go about and how to handle the situation and uh, as a result of that most of the time he was actually uh, became puppet in the hands of the nobles and uh, many uh, times uh, he was uh, not able to decide he was not able to take the decision and uh, uh, most of the time the other like a uh, ruler especially nobles and all uh, governors and all they were taking the decisions and they were misused the power so here you can find it uh during his 20 year reign you know long time he long duration in fact he ruled but uh, during his this 20 years of re uh, reign the real power was actually concentrated uh in the hands of the uh, chahal gani and its leaders uh, giyasuddin balban now giyasuddin balban was the main head of this uh, uh, chahal gani chahal gani is a uh, 40 members actually established to support and to advise the uh, king or emperor in the palace in the Uh, kingdom so this chahal ganis were actually always uh, sometimes uh, preventing sometimes opposing and uh, you know they they are the person who are always creating the some sort of like a prevention for the uh, kings and all in the kingdom so here chahal ganis uh, were uh, always uh, creating the uh, some sort of like a prevention for the nasiruddin uh, mahmud nasiruddin when in fact he uh, he was uh, in fact really puppet in the hands of them and then uh, uh, he couldn't do any kind of like uh, achievements so after nasiruddin's death you know in a uh, 1266 uh, uh, see balban became sultan and uh, ruled for the next two decades so balban was actually able and uh, you know uh, balban when he became the ruler in fact uh, he uh, really um, uh, what called uh, established the different things uh, in the kingdom so in my next video i will talk about the balban and they followed by a decline of the slave dynasty and then i followed by khilji dynasty so uh, i read through this uh, chapter and uh, make sure that you uh, get acquainted with the, all these people okay